Hi, it's Carolyn here. Before you start listening to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently in Switzerland doing my very own and long overdue trip around the country. I'm visiting some of the most popular destinations in Switzerland, as well as a number of lesser known places. And I'm traveling around by both car and train. If you'd like to follow along with my Swiss travels to see where I am and what I'm doing, make sure you follow Holidays to Switzerland on Instagram. That's Holidays number two Switzerland. Here I'll be sharing photos and reels as I go, and I'd love you to follow along. Now, settle back and enjoy this episode. Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course some hidden gems, to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Gritzi, hi there. Welcome to episode 42 of the podcast. Is it photos of the incredible scenic beauty that have enticed you to visit Switzerland? I'm not surprised if it is. Everywhere you turn in Switzerland, you are rewarded with breathtaking views of mountains, lakes, rivers, glaciers, gorges, and lush fields. It really is the most beautiful place on earth. But the magnificent scenery certainly isn't the only thing that Switzerland has going for it. The country is home to 13 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and some rather unique traditions and customs, both of which we are going to hear about today. My guest today is Livio Gertz, Director of Switzerland Tourism, Australia and New Zealand. And Livio has some fascinating facts to share with us in this episode. After hearing from Livio, you'll probably be adding some of these UNESCO World Heritage Sites to your itinerary. And why not try and experience firsthand some of the Swiss customs and traditions when you visit Switzerland too? Just remember to have your camera handy to capture those moments for prosperity. If you need the perfect shot, you need Switzerland. I'd like to thank Livio and his colleagues at Switzerland Tourism for sponsoring the podcast. Take a look at the myswitzerland.com website for Swiss travel inspiration and heaps of travel information. Now, let's hear from Livio. Hi, Livio. Thank you very much for coming onto the podcast. Yes. Hi, Carolyn. Good to be here. Wonderful. Now, would you like to start by telling our listeners a bit about yourself and your career in the in the travel industry and, and your role with Switzerland Tourism? Yeah, with pleasure. So it's it's great to be here, first of all. And uh, so originally, I'm from a small town called Mayenfeld, which is in the north of Graubünden, just about 10 minutes from Chur, which is the regional capital. Uh, maybe people know it from the famous Heidi story and it's red wine. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, yeah, it's the, the region itself is quite famous for tourism as well. So I got in contact with tourists from all over the world at a quite a young age already. And uh, yeah, and then, you know, things, uh, things go, uh, go on and you study tourism and then different stations in Lucerne, promoting the Lucerne region. Later went back uh, for Switzerland tourism, working for Switzerland Convention Bureau in the UK. And now in Sydney since about uh, three years time. Wonderful. Yeah. So you've had a, a, a varied, uh, or been in, in lots of different locations, but uh, obviously you know a lot about Switzerland. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now, I think um, it's probably fair to say that most visitors come to Switzerland f- for the magnificent scenery. They will have seen those photos, have seen videos, and and it's just so stunning that you can't help but but want to be there. But I think one of the other things that makes Switzerland such a great place to visit is some of the customs and traditions that have have been practiced for hundreds and hundreds of years and they're still being practiced today. So could you tell us about some of those customs and and perhaps start with the 
the alpine ascent and descent because I know a lot of people have seen pictures of those decorated cows and they really want to see that when they go to Switzerland. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, it's, and it's funny, like you said, it's, it's, they, they, these traditions and custom has been around for thousands of years sometimes. And only since a couple of years time, people actually start appreciating, appreciating it and, and, and come to Switzerland to actually see it themselves. And uh, what, is, what do you mention with the Alpine ascent or descent? These are two of my favorite customs uh, personally as well, because a bit, a bit of a be- uh, background uh, story here. When It's always when summer approaches. Thousands of herdsmen move their cows and cattle, sheep and goats up to the mountains where life entirely depends on the rhythm of nature. It sounds very idyllic and, and nice and everything, but it's actually really hard work. <laughs> uh, so when I was a kid, when I was a kid uh, so in school holidays, we really we had to support the farm, the farmers, the local farms as well. So we went up there ourselves with the cattle and the cows, and it's it's really hard work, but it's 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 it is um you know nice and and uh, romantic in, in in a way, and um yeah, so um these these traditions more and more uh, are you know visited by by tourists as well in recent years, and uh, it's not just the fact that people go up. Uh, to the Alpine, uh, to the Alp, and then back down again. It's all surrounded with music, with with lots of eating and drinking. People dress up nicely. It's, it's a, the, the whole thing around it, and uh, that's what people appreciate uh, about it. And uh, yeah, next to the traditional customs, um, you know, there's a lot of folklore music. So a lot of the the Swiss folklore music uh, is being played ar- around it. And uh, yeah, the animals are decorated as well, which is amazing. So some some uh, areas, I think, they even have competitions going on. So which is the nicest cow and the nicest sheep or whatever when they when they come back uh, back into into the villages? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. those um, or the, the parades, I guess we'll we'll call them. They have different names depending on which part of Switzerland um, you're in, too, don't they? Because I know, like in in some regions, it's it's uh, regions. It's called their. Um, Alpa Zug and yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I I can't even remember what it's called in the French the French speaking part, but yeah, it's it's quite different, isn't it? So yeah, you got me there, Caroline. I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't know it in French either. <laughs> but it is true; it's different. Those, yeah. Yeah. What we will do is we'll we'll put all the different versions of the name um, in the show notes for this episode, so that if someone's visiting a particular area, they can they can search because the the dates aren't set every year, are they? Like in advance, it it all depends. Depends on the season. It really depends on the season because, like traditionally, you know, it is that the, when when summer starts, they usually go up there, uh, and then and then uh, in autumn time they come back down. But it always depends a bit on uh, on the weather. It depends on the the, the level that what's available in terms of uh, of grassings. The cows they're obviously eating the the grass up there, and they need to come back down. It all depends on the season, really. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what about um, some of the other um, famous traditions? I know in um, Basel they've just finished the Fasnacht um, and there's another quite unusual uh, tradition that I've only ever seen photos of and it's the burning of um, like an effigy. So could you could you tell us about those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, Basel, that's, that's just uh, been the, the Fasnacht, the carnival, that's right. Uh, just mentioning Lucerne. Lucerne is quite big as well with carnivals. So that's, that's huge. That's so part of the, the event calendar uh, every year. Uh, but then the, the Berg you mentioned, uh, it's it's during the traditional Sechseleuten. It's it's even hard to pronounce for me, so don't worry if you can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, you noticed it's... I didn't pronounce it there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you did, but you did well. You did well, Caroline. And uh, but it's basically uh, it's it's like the Fasnacht or the Carnival. It's the same. It's basically chasing away winter. So it's the, the end of winter. And the the, the Sechseleuten holiday, sorry, the Sechseleuten holiday, uh, literally means the ringing of the six o'clock bells, and it's usually on the third Sunday in April. And it, it's it's a, a tradition that dates back to the uh, 18th uh, century, when a guild, which is a trade association, was formed and held nighttime processions. That's always on on horseback with with musical accompaniment. So it's a huge uh, a huge event, and uh, yeah, it's taking place in Zurich on the uh, in in the center of Zurich. And it basically ends with the burning of a giant book, so which is nothing else than an 80 kilo snowman <laughs> over three meters tall. And it's filled with fireworks and set on fire at 6 p.m. sharp on that day. Mm-hmm. So those sounds very spectacular, which, which it is. And uh, yeah, when basically when the head of this book explodes, this is the signal of the official end of winter. And it's always a big tradition around it that uh, the quicker it explodes, the hotter and longer the summer will be. Oh, so it's okay. a little, uh, little uh, fun fact <laughs> around there as well. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can I can imagine that everyone would be hoping for a really big bang. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, now, something else that's um, quite probably unique to Switzerland are some of the the historic sports. Yes, that's right. That have been practiced, and we've got Swiss wrestling, stone throwing, and I have to say they're not actually stones; they're like rocks. And, they're really heavy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and flag throwing. So, can you give us a bit more info about about those practices? Yeah, absolutely. So maybe starting with the Swiss wrestling, which is, a, so we say we say Schwingen in Swiss German. I'm sure it's a, a name for it in French and Italian, but uh, don't make me <laughs> pronounce that. So Schwingen is basically nothing else than a fight, an actual fight between two physically powerful competitors, and it has its own rules, grips, and throws. So it's not an actual Schwingen or, or Judo. It's it's in a known sport with own rules and uh, and, and uh, ideas behind it. And uh, it's it's like many many other things in, in our customs and tradition. It comes from from back in the day when the herdsmen, the farmers, basically had an argument with each other, and they essentially started swinging with each other. <laughs> and uh, it's it's nowadays it's an elite sport. So so swinging is, is a, a big sport in Switzerland, and uh, it's performed in in all different areas, and it's it's huge. So it's a, it's a big thing uh, in the Swiss events calendar. And then the, the stone throwing is, is a part of it. So it's uh, it's basically, I had to Google it this morning. I didn't know. I think it's about 83.5 kilograms. So yeah, it's a very wow. heavy stone that people have to throw. And it, it is a sport as well. So it's it's all, it's all also performed at the, um, you know, Swiss traditional festivals. You know, it's the same with string and uh, flag throwing, the yodelings. It all takes place at different festivals. You know, we talked about the... Um, the um, the Alpine descent. So even uh, around these Alpine descent events, there might be string and taking place, the yodeling. So it's all kind of, you know, taking place at the same time, more or less. And the stone throwing is basically Steinstoßen, as we call it. Uh, it's basically, the, you know, people throw an 80.3.5 kilo stone <laughs> as, as, as far as they can. As you do. And, uh, yeah, do as, as you do, as you do casually. And uh, yeah, and the same with the flag, uh, flag throwing, which is... Um, it's always accompanied with folkloric sound, the music again, you know, the, the yodelings, it's all uh, coming together. And uh, it used to be um, used to be a privilege reserved for the urban guilds back in the day, back in the Middle Ages. And and again, it's now just um, a competition, essentially. There's the competitions taking place with uh, flag, uh, flag throwers, judges who, you know, give you notes and grades and things. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a, you know, an important uh, tradition for us Swiss, absolutely. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like those those traditions are dying out at all. They're obviously still still practiced today. And the opposite, yeah, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Now you did mention their yodeling, and uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about is um, you know, a bit more about yodeling and also the alphorn playing because you know that the haunting sound of the alphorn. It's uh, it just I don't know. It gives you goosebumps. It's just amazing. And I, yeah. I remember, I've seen I've seen the alphorn players quite a few times but I remember taking the train up to um, Schinniger Platt um, above Interlaken mm-hmm. and just as the train sort of pulled into the station the Alphorn players were were playing oh and it was just amazing it yeah it's it's such a wonderful sound and I, I guess yeah. that that probably relates back to the cows and the the Alpine herdsmen again Exactly. We, we, you got it right. It's all connected with each other. <laughs> and uh, it used to be a communication tool, nothing else. Nowadays, we have mobile phones and, and email. Back in the day, they had alphorns and, and the yodeling. So basically, it's uh, it's been used as a tool used by shepherds. Uh, it was used to call the cows from the pastures and uh, into the barn at milking time, for example. Uh, then later, the blowing of the alphorn in, in, the alphorn in the evening was also a traditional theme in art. And this sound um, served as an evening prayer. So they're different functions uh, throughout the year, really. But like, like I just said, nowadays, it's again, it's used for festivals. It's when the cows come down from the alpine pastures. It's, the, the alpines are being blown. You know, people are singing. It's just part of um, festivities as well, a lot. And, and Schneider Platt, you mentioned it, the Jungfrau, the events. There's the, the at all the, the traditional events that take place in Switzerland, like, you know, whether it's a World Cup race in, in Wengen or whether it's the snow open air in Zermatt. It's always surrounded by uh, by alphorn um, blowers, by by the yodeling. The you know sometimes with the Schwingen uh, festival ne- mm-hmm. uh, next to it. So it's all yeah, it's all taking place. Yeah, wonderful. I, I yeah. also remember seeing the alphorns, uh, alphorn blowers w- when I was walking through uh, Lucerne Old Town one time. So that that was a bit of yeah, a shock yeah. to come around the corner and and there they were. But yeah, it's it's such a wonderful sound, and I can't imagine how long it would take to learn how to actually play one. 
it's very hard. I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if somebody plays the trumpet, it might be easier to, to perform. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't, I've, I've tried it and I failed uh, miserably. So I, it's very hard to play because it's just a bit, such a big instrument as well. Yeah. You need to, you know, it's such a powerful instrument. And, you know, like you said, so you, you might walk around in, in an old town in Switzerland and just around the corner, three album players are performing a song. It's just not, it's not just at festivals, you know, like mm-hmm. I kept saying. It's also like my sister had a couple of album players at, at her wedding. Okay. Or, uh, you know, you, you walk, walk around the, um, you know, go for, go for a hike somewhere and there's somebody playing the album yeah. themselves. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. And it's something that, um, that you will remember about your visit to Switzerland too, you know, like. Yeah, exactly. As, as wonderful as all that scenery is. Um, yeah, to, to to think back and remember that Elphorn sound or the or the yodeling, uh, just amazing. It's very distinctive, and it's it's sort of yeah, you, you always remember it. It's it's always linked with with uh, your Swiss holiday somehow. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about um, some of the customs and traditions, and and of course, there's all that natural scenic beauty in Switzerland. But there are also some other um, things that are really worth visiting now. Switzerland is home to 13 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and some of them are man-made and and some of them are are natural. But maybe you could uh, just tell us about a few of those that you think are worth worth visiting when when people go to Switzerland. Absolutely. I mean, there's, uh, yeah, like I said, 13 different sites. So we could probably feel like another extra uh, podcast just to talk about the the, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. But, um, yeah, just a few. I mean, one of my favourites is probably the uh, Abbey of St. Gallen. So St. Gallen, uh, located in the eastern part of Switzerland, a uh, beautiful old town, car-free. You walk uh, sort of, you know, in the old town and suddenly you come across this, this big uh, convent, St. Gallen, the Baroque Cathedral. And uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievably nice. It's, uh, it includes a library, monastery archives, and it's just, uh, yeah, definitely a place to visit. It was added to the list in 1983, so quite some years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely one of the top sites, I would say. Uh, but uh, but also, I think one of my favorites is definitely, you know, talking about trains. We always talk about public transportation and tra- public transportation and trains in Switzerland is the Eurasian Railway, which uh, many people connect with the Bernina Express or the Glacier Express. So that's that's an unbelievable, unbelievably nice, um, uh, you know, place to visit as well. And uh, yeah, it was. It's 130 kilometers on the train. The, the route itself covers 122 kilometers from Tusis to Tirano. Lots of bridges, tunnels, and towns along the way. And I think it was added in 2008. It's definitely something uh, you know. I would I recommend people to see when they're in Switzerland. Okay. And one of the places that I'm looking forward to visiting is the Lavo Vineyards. The terrace, the terrace vineyards there alongside um, Lake Geneva. H- have you visited there? I have, I have indeed. Yes, it's it's one of the must visits for uh, for us Swiss. I think it's uh, just located in the French speaking part, as, as the name uh, indicates, with Lavo, Lavo region, and uh, just uh, high above Lake Geneva, actually. Uh, and it's it's eight hundred hectares, uh, a lot of wine, a lot a lot of wine is there. And the terraced vineyards um, is the largest contiguous vineyard area with a terrace, which is offering magnific- magnificent views. They also call it the, the, the three suns, you know, because your one sun is the, the lake, the, the, the light of the lake mirroring onto the vineyards, mm-hmm. then the terraces itself and the actual sun. Okay. So it's a lot of, uh, it's a very warm climate and hence they have brilliant wine there to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. Now, another uh, another site that's on the the in the French speaking part is um, mm-hmm. Le Chaux de Fonds. Have I pronounced that right? The the watchmaking. La Chaux de yeah. yeah. The watchmaking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, what what can you tell us about that? I've been there as a child, so I have to admit I haven't been there in ages. But it's it's I still remember the remember the town itself. It's it's a planned city, so it's you, you look at a Google Maps. It's a planned city, so it's quite structured, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's where where the the, the history and the, all the stories all around watches in, in watches and Switzerland uh, has started with the the watch manufacturer companies and so on and so forth. And it's uh, exactly it's in the French speaking part as well. It's a little little bit off off grid, so it's uh, you take have to take a few trains to get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's 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 really um, yeah worthwhile seeing as well. You know, see, learn about the history of, of of watches. You can make a watch making course to to learn how a watch is 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 made. You know, mm-hmm. you, how does it work? How does it function? And it's uh, it's just just part of Swiss tradition, Swiss customs as well itself. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's one thing Switzerland's very famous for, isn't it? It's watches. 
Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then we've got the old town of Bern, um, which is yeah, a beautiful city that I've visited mm-hmm. quite a number of times. My husband's aunt lives in Bern, so I've I've wandered the old old town m- many, many times. And, and, yeah, what a beautiful city that is. So uh, many people think it's Zurich or Geneva. But Bern, our capital city with its lovely old town, it was added to the um, UNESCO World Heritage Sites list in 1983. And uh, it's just amazing when you, you you remember probably walking around the old town, these little alleys, the sandstone buildings and all the arcades. So many people don't know it's six kilometers of arcade. So if it's raining, which it hardly doesn't, you can always, uh, you're always safe to do your shopping uh, underneath the arcades in, uh, in Bern. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A UNESCO site in the Italian uh, speaking region are the three castles of Bellinzona. Yes, that's right. Um, another site I haven't yet been to, but hoping to visit there soon. Um, what, what can we, you know, what, what will we see when we go to the, the castles there? You first see them when you. So when I first saw them when I was when I was a kid, it was on the train. So you you, you know you you're sort of passing by uh, or you know entering Bellinzona by train, and you just see from far away you see those three castles slightly up on a hill or on hills if if you want, and it's just an unbelievable view and it's unexpected. You know you enter this valley and you see these these medieval castles, and it, it is they are definitely the main attraction in the Ticino uh, area, and they've only been added to the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the year two thousand. But with, with its bastions, the walls, the towers, battlements and gates. So it's, it's really an uh, imposing fortification, which is definitely a must-see when you're visiting the south of, uh, mm. of Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. and I've, I've seen photos and they've got, you know, the, the crenellated sort of walls and it, it just it just looks like it's yeah, from, a, yeah. from a movie. And you can, exactly, you can experience it. It's, it's not something you just have to see from far from a train like I did. You can go there. There's a restaurant in there. You know, you can, you can walk around. It's, it's completely free to visit. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Now, one uh, non-man-made uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site that we really need to talk about is the Swiss Alps Jungfrau Alech region. Yes. That, now, yeah. many people obviously will have heard of the, the Jungfrau region and they may have heard of the Alech Glacier, but the whole mm-hmm. area is combined as a, as a UNESCO site, isn't it? Yes, that's right. That's right. And it's, it's one of the, one of the, the hotspots, I would say, in, uh, in Switzerland as well. It's, 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 uh, just near the uh, Eigermönke Jungfrau, so the three famous, uh, three famous mountains, uh, there. And the best way to experience it is actually when you go up on the Jungfrau Joch, which is, uh, as you might know, the highest train station in Europe. Get on the train and the train goes all the way to the top, uh, on more than three thousand, three and a half thousand meters above sea level. Get off that train and just look down to the, to the glacier, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it, it's certainly something that that stays with you. Your, your first view of the the Arlech Glacier, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So there's plenty there um, that we need to you know consider visiting. So if people are listening, they're thinking of you know, or they're getting their itinerary sorted. I'm sure there's quite a few new places that you've um, just mm-hmm. added to their list. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a bit of refining to to fit everything in. Now. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here and just ask you, what are the top three things that you think anyone should visit when they go to Switzerland for the first time? For the first time. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty much on the spot, but I'm, I'm happy to answer that. <laughs> <Can you? laughs> uh, the first top for first time visitors, uh, probably because Switzerland is so diverse, right? We have the cities, the lakes, the mountains and everything. I'll probably do one each if, if it was my first time. Go to Switzerland. You're landing in Zurich. Uh, I would explore the city, so you know, go to go to uh, Lucerne, the old town of Lucerne. Make sure maybe it's during the uh, Fasnacht, the carnival time. That's even more fun. Uh, but definitely visit one of the cities, uh, for example, Lucerne, the old town. Walk around. Uh, you can spend the whole day just just exploring and then just be by be next to the water uh, and explore the uh, old, you know, traditional architecture of Swiss cities. Uh, the second thing is probably what I've mentioned before with public transportation, which is, which sort of comes, comes with it anyway, as you, as you use the train to get around in Switzerland, get the Swiss travel pass, hop on a train. Uh, it's, it's sort of the hop on, hop off system. So you just have the Swiss travel pass and you don't need to, uh, you know, worry about train times. It's all connected with each other. So if you want to plan to go to, uh, let's say to Engelberg, you just get on that train from Zurich airport. You might change in Zurich or in Lucerne and you're there. And it's just spectacular, uh, an, an experience in itself being mm-hmm. on, on a Swiss train, which is just uh, the, with the scenery and everything. It's just beautiful. And then the third is probably, like I said, the lakes. So what well, people don't know is we have so many lakes. Don't, uh, don't ask me how many, but there are plenty of lakes. And uh, I'll probably get on one of the 
one of the you know steamboats or one of the lake cruise cruises in uh, on Lake Lucerne, on Lake Zurich, uh, on Lake Geneva, or any any other lake, and just explore Switzerland like that. You, you can use the Swiss travel pass for it as well. So it's just incredibly easy as well to uh, yeah. to get around and to explore. Yeah. Yeah. And and certainly traveling those two ways, like by train and by boat, how how much more relaxing could it possibly be? You know, there's there's yeah. no yeah. navigating <laughs> to worry about. There's you know you just sit back and relax, taking the scenery while someone else gets you from A to B. So exactly, wonderful. you yeah, can take perfect. lots of pictures and uh, yeah, <laughs> just relax and enjoy. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Livio, for uh, sharing all that with us today. As I said, I'm sure there's uh, lots more places now that people have added to their itinerary. Um, So if they can't fit them in on the first visit, well, I guess they'll just have to go back to Switzerland again. That's right. That's right. And uh, I also um, recommend also having a look out there on our website. There's much, much more information uh, on myswitzerland.com, you know, in terms of itineraries, ideas. um, Yeah. Have a look. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll link to your website in the show notes as well. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll, um, I'll list the names of the, or the different names of those alpine descents and, and also link through, I'm sure on your website, there's a section on um, the different events and festivals and when they're taking exactly. place. So I'll, I'll link to that so that people, if they're interested in a, in a particular festival, they can plan their visit to, to coincide with that. Sounds great. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Caroline. Look forward to chatting again. Same here. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, my goodness. The list of places to visit in Switzerland just keeps getting longer. Will you include any of these UNESCO World Heritage Sites in your itinerary? Or will you plan your visit to coincide with one of the many festivals where the unique customs and traditions that Livio mentioned are on display? I think it's wonderful that these centuries-old traditions are still practised today and are even growing in popularity. Attending festivals like Carnival or the Alpine Descent or watching flag throwers, alphorn blowers or yodelers perform will create memories that will stay with you forever. If you'd like more information about any of the customs, sports or UNESCO World Heritage Sites that were mentioned in this episode, head over to the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 42. I'll include links to the Switzerland Tourism website where you can find further details. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on your favourite podcast app. And if you have any friends planning to visit Switzerland, I'd love it if you told them about the podcast too. And if you're a fan of chocolate, don't miss episode 43, which is dedicated to decadent must-have chocolate experiences in Switzerland. Thanks for listening. Until next time, cheers. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website, holidaystoswitzerland.com, sign up for our monthly newsletter, or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favourite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.